What if I told you that as many as 8.8 .8 million unique viewers were watching the same Fortnite competition every Friday, and that it wasn't even run by Fortnite developer Epic Games, but by an unaffiliated YouTuber? Why, hello there. My name is Keemstar. And just recently, Epic pledged to sink $100 million into the upcoming season birthing the Fortnite World Cup sometime in the future, and the eight-week Fortnite Summer Skirmish. Whether it's esports or not, this shit is popping off. Fortnite Friday answered one of the big questions that everyone had when Fortnite exploded into mainstream relevance just a few months ago. How are they going to make this interesting to watch? Unlike other attempts at Battle Royale esports, Fortnite Fridays has placed the emphasis on two things, streamers and kills. Excuse me? The whole thing feels as much like a reality show as it does a major esports event. There's as much focus on the memes, the highlight plays, and the spectacle that Fortnite has become on Twitch as there is on who wins and who loses. Can he survive at the finish line? Got and it. Nick A30 will <laughs> oh my stay up. Nine, seven HP and a dream. Keeping oh, oh, what did he get killed by? He eliminated himself. Oh my gosh, Nick! He jumped out and did they get him? <laughs> Which is probably where all the Fortnite's not an esport cries are coming from. But the answer to that question doesn't really matter. The bottom line is that people are competing, and millions of eyes are on them. Problem number one with Battle Royale esports is the logistical nightmare with getting 100 people in a room, physically or virtually, to battle to the death. The second big problem is how you make that interesting for viewers without boring them to death or giving them a seizure. It's crazy. I'm like, how does his brain think that fast? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my gosh. This is insane. This Look is at insane. that. What popular YouTuber Keemstar and UMG have done with Fortnite Fridays is tune the focus of their broadcast away from the highest tiers of competitive integrity and towards action and entertainment. Here's how it works. During Fortnite Fridays, two teams of two join four-person squads and battle it out. The team with the most eliminations moves on in the bracket, and every team must stream the matches to ensure competitive integrity and, well, viewership numbers. Gone are the problems with turtling up in one-by-one -one structures and playing riskless Fortnite. This format is about lethality. Yeah, me. I headshot him with a Nosco. Let's watch the edit play here. Oh, oh no! The but the tree! Oh, the tree <laughs> was saved! The tree of life! And the build, the save from 72 hours, extreme. I mean, look at this versatility here in his build. Man, just to go, oh, you trap me in? Didn't I? Oh, oh my gosh. 72 so heavens! Like the, the trap! The trap! The trap! I'm done for him, But it's not just Keemstar trying to make the competitive side of Fortnite work. Fortnite's esports origin story starts in the same place that almost everything important about Fortnite starts from. Ninja. Ninja hosted his own event, Ninja Vegas at the Esports Arena in Las Vegas. The event broke Ninja's own record for concurrent viewers on an individual's Twitch stream with 667,000 concurrent viewers. At the time, it wasn't anything new in terms of format. Ninja mostly just applied the PUBG Esports format to Fortnite, but like Kimstar does now, he added an emphasis on personality. The event was about Ninja. Players even got a financial incentive if they managed to kill him. But a lot of the on-screen broadcast time was spent on other top streamers too, like Myth. Dr. Lupa was even one of the casters. Fortnite has shown us that these on-screen personalities are what keep viewers watching. After Ninja Vegas came the E3 Fortnite Invitational Pro-Am, which leveraged the fact that even celebrities were caught up in the massive wave of Fortnite culture and teamed them up with top streamers to compete. And what in... <laughs> what? <laughs> Who That's what we were waiting for? CDN the third. Held up right, the line for this. The, the New Day's events. passing out pancakes. The event was our first opportunity to see Fortnite from a third-person perspective, getting to see build battles from afar without having to deal with that spinning first-person blueprint roller coaster ride we're all used to. By and large, the event was successful, widely viewed and even relatively action-packed. And in storybook fashion, Ninja and DJ Marshmallow came out the victors. And here you have it, guys, the 2018 Pro-Am Fortnite Tournament winners. Now, Fortnite Friday has been a shocking success. Lil Yachty, Paul George, and Marshmallow played at the Invitational, and obviously Ninja Vegas was incredibly successful. So, is Fortnite the future of esports? Well, it hasn't all been perfect. 
Let's get back to that $100 million investment Epic is making. It's an exciting number, sure, but the implementation of the Fortnite esports framework has been awkward. I, I can't, I, dude, I can't even move, bro. I cannot even move, bro. I cannot even move, bro. One more, one more time. time, one more oh time. Oh my God, I can't even move. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. The Fortnite Summer Skirmish is an eight week long summer tournament series that's happening every Friday and Saturday this summer. Eight million dollars in prize money is guaranteed over the course of the event. It sounds great, right? Well, even the first few weeks of the event have been mired in mixed reactions and severe technical problems. Yeah. I can't run out of storm because it's lagging. I'm still stuck in the zone. Dude, Are you kidding? Um, Are you kidding? Dude. I'm in the, what? The what was that? that? Dude, I couldn't Are get out of the zone. I, I get couldn't it. get in this story. Look how many people just died to the zone. Epic hit the right tone by allowing players to stream the tournament, but their viewer-friendly esports client wasn't exactly ready for the start of the season. There was lag, UI issues, and going back to that focus on survival made the format just boring. The Summer Skirmish does offer a small incentive for players who are able to get the most kills, but if we're being honest, it really only matters if you can get victory royale. It's simply about staying alive, and sometimes, that's like watching paint dry. But Fortnite Friday never had that problem. I think at this point, it's pretty hard to argue that Fortnite's not well on its way to establishing itself as an esports. But it is easy to argue that there's a long way to go. Pro players are literally trying to queue up into a lobby all at the same time in hopes of getting an effective scrim. Five, four, <laughs> three, two, one, go. Now if I miss that one, I call, I just quit, period. <laughs> And the game itself does absolutely nothing to help competitive players. There's no ranked mode, no custom lobbies, nothing. What we're seeing with Fortnite Esports is honestly not that far from the early days of PUBG Esports, where 100 players would load into a match at the same time, leading to overheated machines and failed events. The viewer experience was challenging, to say the least. Down in oh, what? How is he alive? Um, um, uh, yeah. At the center of it all seems to be streaming. Fortnite has proven that you don't need everybody all in the same place to compete, and that when it comes to viewership, personality and accessibility are often just as important as skill. Fortnite has also proven that as much as we want to watch our favorite players win, we also want to be able to interact with them. We want to watch them style on people. Oh my! Turn it! We want to watch them dance and trash talk. What the fuck does that sound? Are you dancing right now? We want to get to the heart of what gaming is all about. So is Fortnite an eSport? Does it even matter? Dad. <laughs> 86 fucking thousand dollars? Yeah. Are you crying? No, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, I would too, brother. Thanks for watching. If you want more great content just like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button.